Hello everybody, Conti here with another video. How to create a neon laser line animation in DaVinci Resolve 17. Inside your edits window, go to effects library. Underneath toolbox, go to effects and go to find fusion composition. Click and drag one of these effect filters to the start of your edits timeline. Using the selection mode tool, which you can also choose by pressing A, Click and drag the red playhead to the end of your Fusion Composition clip on your edit timeline to check the duration. By default, my Fusion Composition clip will play for 5 seconds. Use the Selection Mode tool to click on the end of the edit and drag your mouse cursor to resize and change the duration if you wish. Right click on your Fusion Composition clip and go to Open in Fusion page. Inside your Fusion Nodes panel, Hold in Shift and press Space to open up the Select Tool window. Use the search box at the bottom to find a rectangle tool. Click on this and go to click on Add. We will use this tool to draw the laser lines which will appear on your animation clip. Left click once in the right view circle which appears underneath the rectangle tool when you drag your mouse cursor over this. We can now see in the Fusion Preview window what the rectangles will look like as we are editing this. With the Rectangle 1 tool selected, go to Inspector and underneath Controls, change Soft Edge to 0.03. This will create a slight fade effect around the edges of your rectangle shape. Change Width to 0.6 and change Height to 0.08. To have the rectangles pointing up towards the top left corner of my canvas, I will increase angle to 135. Hold shift and press space again, and go to add the P emitter tool. This tool will be used to make the rectangle shapes appear in random locations on the canvas. However, we are not able to use the rectangles as particles yet, as this particular tool cannot be connected to P Emitter 1. So with P Emitter 1 selected, under Inspector again, go to Style and change Style from Point to Bitmap. You should now see a yellow arrow appear to the left of the P Emitter 1 node. Left click once on the small grey box next to Rectangle 1 and drag your mouse cursor to the yellow arrow beside P Emitter 1 to make a connection. To apply colour to your neon lines, click on Colour Controls, double click on the box next to the colour label, select the colour shade manually from the choices given inside the colour window which appears, or type in the relevant colour shade code into the HTML box which appears towards the bottom of this particular screen. In this particular example, I will choose a vibrant purple colour using the code EE00FF. Use the column furthest to the right to adjust the intensity of the colour shade which you have chosen. Click OK once you are done. Go to Colour Variants. To have my chosen purple shade vary in appearance on each of the neon lines which will be on my video, we can increase the variance levels for red, green and blue. Do this for each line by clicking on the circle which appears to the right side towards high and dragging these to the right all the way up to 1. So that these three colour levels vary throughout the animation and the overall appearance of your neon lines appears vibrant. Avoid setting these variance levels too low to prevent your neon lines appearing too dark. To vary the opacity level of your neon lines, set low of alpha variance to minus 1 and set the high value to 1. Go to Fade Controls to have the neon lines fading into the canvas in the first 25% of their lifespan. I will increase Fade In to 0.25 and to have the neon lines fade out in the last 20% of their lifespan, I will set the Out value to 0.8. To vary the size of the neon lines which appear on screen, go to Size Controls, change Size Variance to 0 0.2. On the preview screen, 
by default you should see a red circle in the center which marks the point on the canvas where the particles will be emitted from. However, for this particular project, we want for the neon lines to appear across the whole canvas. In order to achieve this, we need to go to Region and change Region from Sphere to All. Return to Controls. To reduce the number of neon lines which appear on screen at any one time, under Emitter, reduce number from 10 to 0.5. To add movement, speed and direction to the neon lines, go to Velocity. Increase the velocity variable value slightly to 0.05. The value for angle must match the same that we gave the original rectangle node. In this particular project, the angle for our rectangular shape was 135. The same value will be applied here to ensure that these lines flow towards the top left corner of our canvas. With your P-Emitter tool selected, hold Shift and press Space and go to select a P-Merge tool. This tool will be used later in this tutorial to demonstrate how we can add different coloured neon lines to your animation. With this particular P-Merge node selected, hold Shift and press Space and go to add P-Render. This node will help us process the neon light particle animation in your final video. And with P-Render selected, Hold Shift and press Space once more. Go to add a Soft Glow tool. We will use this tool to intensify the fade effect which appears around the edges of your rectangular shapes. With the Soft Glow node selected, go to Inspector. Change Glow Size from 10 to 15. To ensure that the Soft Glow isn't too intense, I will reduce Gain to 0.9. The gain value refers to the intensity of the brighter areas of your pictures or video. Now to add a gradient background to this particular file. Ensure that all of your nodes are deselected. Hold Shift and press Space. And go to add a normal merge tool. Connect the grey box of soft glow to the foreground green arrow of merge 1. This will ensure that the neon lines appear in front of the gradient shade that we will create. Connect Merge 1 to Media Out 1. Deselect your nodes once again. Hold Shift and press Space. And go to choose a Background Tool. Connect this to the yellow arrow of Merge 1. Click on the right view circle under Media Out 1. With your Background 1 node selected, go to Inspector. And underneath Color, change the type from Solid Color to gradient. To angle the gradient so that it reflects the direction in which the neon lines are heading, apply the following coordinates to start and end X and Y. Start X will be 0.72, start Y will be 0.28, end X will be 0.18, end Y will be 1.26. The green line on the preview window can also be manually adjusted depending on the direction that you want your neon lines to flow in. Scroll up using your mouse so that you are able to see this, or adjust the zoom settings in the top left corner of your preview window. Ensure that the first gradient node is selected underneath the black shade. Double click on this color box underneath the gradient bar, and apply the following code to change the dark shade on the canvas, hashtag 000946. Click OK. Drag your mouse cursor to the halfway point on the gradient bar. You should see an addition symbol appearing next to your mouse cursor. Select the gradient bar and a new node should appear. Change the number value underneath this to 0.48 so that it is positioned almost halfway across the gradient bar. Double click on the color box below to change this color shade. Since we chose dark blue as our previous colour shade, I will choose a lighter shade for this particular midpoint. The code I will use is hashtag 223A8B. Click OK. And select the final node which appears towards the far right side of the gradient bar. At position 1.0, double click on the white box which appears below. And type in the following code to vary the colour slightly from blue to purple 
hashtag 724FFF. Nothing is set in stone in DaVinci Resolve and you can experiment with different coloured gradients. Now to add additional neon lines of a different colour. Deselect your nodes. Hold Ctrl and select Rectangle 1 and P Emitter 1. Use Command instead of Ctrl if you are a Mac user. Hold Ctrl and press C to copy. Deselect your highlighted nodes. Hold Ctrl and press V to paste. Connect your duplicated P Emitter node to P Merge 1. Select the Duplicate Rectangle tool. Under Inspector, change Width to 0.5 and change Height to 0.05. This should add some variation to your new neon lines, apart from just the colour shade which we will change shortly. And increase Soft Edge to 0.04. Click on the Duplicated P Emitter node. Go to Inspector and underneath Style, under Colour Controls, double click on the box where our original purple shade appears. And for this new set of neon lines, I will use a light green colour shade using the code hashtag 07FF55. Click OK. To add minor speed variation, go to Controls and change Velocity Variance to 0.07. And to have the quantity of green neon lines slightly different to those of the purple ones, change number under emitter from 0.5, which is the value we gave the purple lines, to 0.3. Thank you very much for watching. I hope that video was useful to you. If you enjoyed the content and wish to be notified about future uploads on this channel, please like, share and subscribe. Join me soon for another video. Take care.